Welcome back to Wood Engineering. I'm Jeff Orochko from Carleton University. And in this video, I'm going to give a quick introduction to all of the different parts of beam design in uh, timber. So basically we're talking about, we have a member, timber, wood member, and uh, it's spanning some span and uh, it's supported on some kind of bearing support. And then we have some loads that are causing bending. And this is the very simplest case that I'm showing here, but we can of course have indeterminate um, cases as well, where we go across multiple supports, or we can have cantilevers like we're gonna see in the example. And uh, we wanna be able to calculate the strength of this beam. Obviously this is one of the key things that we want to do in structural engineering in timber. So uh, we have a regular beam here, the bearings are shown in blue, and we have some kind of distributed load and that could be any kind of distributed load that we care to uh, evaluate it for. And when we design for bearing in timber, just like when we design for, uh, sorry, bending, not bearing, just like we design for bending in any other material, uh, we have multiple different um, failure modes that we have to check for. I mean, the most obvious one is bending causing failure. So moment resistance, but um, we have a number of others as well that we're going to need to check. So there are four different parts of beam design. And in this video, I'm just gonna go over each of them one by one so that you know which ones we're gonna focus on in the next videos. And then uh, in the next video, we're gonna start to talk about bending strength. So the first one is the most obvious one for beams, which is the moment resistance. So we have some moment which causes tension in the bottom and compression in the top. What I've shown on the right is a uh, wood member with pure moment. Now, of course, generally for beams, we don't typically have pure moment, especially when we're designing in timber. Um, usually we have moment combined with shear, so we don't get exactly this particular um, um, mode. We'll have some shear as well. Um, at the same time, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But if we're just talking about moment, um, we are looking at, as I said, tension on one side, tension on the bottom, and we have compression um, at the top. And so the different possible failure modes are either um, tension failure in the bottom fibers, so I actually have those fibers fail and pull apart, um, causing a split, which would cause the piece to fail. Or the other is that we could have a compression crushing failure on the top. So these are the ways that, uh, that we can fail for a moment. And um, um, part of that compression part at the top, uh, another thing that we need to talk about is gonna be lateral torsional buckling, which is actually not the top crushing, but the top actually buckling out of plane and that, uh, that causes our member to effectively fail as well. And we're gonna spend significant time when we talk about bending, talking about lateral torsional buckling failure and how to calculate the strength of that.
Okay, so the second potential failure mode that we have in timber is a uh, shear failure mode. So we need to calculate our shear resistance. Now, if you're familiar with steel design, um, you're probably familiar with thinking that shear resistance is not uh, typically something that governs for steel, but if you uh, remember back to concrete, shear resistance is a very important component, and it's the same deal in um, timber, but for a different reason. Um, so in timber, when we have shear in our timber member, and this is my bundle of straws representing the fibers in a timber section, um, when I want to shear that, like by going like this, the straws want to move relative to each other in the longitudinal direction. Can you see that? So the straws are sliding past each other. And why this is a particularly weak failure mode in wood is because what's holding those fibers together, the fibers that are next to each other, what's what are holding these together from sliding relative to each other is, uh, is actually the lignin in the wood matrix. And the lignin is the weakest part of the wood matrix. So shear is a critical um, failure mode that we need to check in wood because it is easy to fail wood members in shear. And we have two types of shear. One is the longitudinal shear, which is the regular shearing like this, where all the fibers are kind of moving relative to each other. And the other one is called the notch shear, which takes into account um, problems that we can have if we cut notches in the piece of wood causing um, uh, stress concentrations that can cause it to fail. So if we're talking about longitudinal shear, we're talking about a failure at the place where we have the highest shear, which typically, uh, if you remember your mechanics, would be in the center of the cross section, and we would have a crack form, and then that crack would propagate through the whole piece of wood, and the piece of wood would fail. For notch shear, what we're talking about is a stress concentration occurring in this re-entrant corner notch, um, why would we have a notch in a piece of wood? It might be common because of geometry to fit a piece of wood or in order to um, set down a roof joist properly or something like that to cut a notch in the piece to accommodate construction um, and to you know accommodate if my piece of wood is otherwise too deep, I can cut a notch at the support so I can set it down a little bit further. Um, but we pay a big price, uh, we pay a big penalty for that because if we do cut notches like that, it really weakens this section here or shear and it's common that we can uh, because of that stress concentration uh, initiate a shear crack failure there um, uh, at that point with a very low strength so that is a separate check that we have to do in timber for looking at notches which you wouldn't find in uh, in other materials generally So the third mode that we have to check is bearing resistance, which we have covered in some um, uh, detail already uh, in this course. And this is a compression perpendicular to grain failure, which means I'm squeezing the straws. And uh, as we discussed, um, this actually is a uh, deflection criteria for considering failure due to compression perpendicular to grain. Of course, whenever we have beams, we need to sit them on something so um, we're typically going to have some kind of bearing. I mean, the other option that we have, obviously, in beams is to cut holes 
like in a steel beam and bolt through. But uh, it turns out that that type of connection is typically quite a bit weaker than um, a connection where we have bearing that having to do with um, tension, per, uh, tension perpendicular to grain strength, which is very, very low in wood. So typically if we can bear a piece of wood, sit it on something in order to support it at the end, um, that is the preferred way to, um, to connect it to another member. And calculating the strength of this um, obviously is very important. And the failure mode is crushing of the fibers. And um, we talked about exactly how uh, we can go about calculating that. So we're gonna have to do that for every uh, wood beam that we want to design. Okay, so the last one that we need to consider is deflection limitations. And this is, while well, the previous uh, three failure modes were, serve, uh, sorry, were ultimate limit state criteria, that is failure criteria, deflection limits are a serviceability limit state. And so we use different load combinations to calculate the loads um, for, uh, to calculate the loads that we need in order to calculate uh, deflections for checking deflection criteria. And for a simply supported beam like the one that I'm showing here, um, we would want to check, for example, the maximum deflection um, of the beam. That might not be exactly at the center, depending on where the loading is, but uh, we need to calculate that deflection to make sure that it's not excessive. Excessive deflections are a problem serviceability-wise, so we don't want uh, people in our building to uh, observe the beams visibly deflecting under load because that would make everybody uncomfortable and even if the building is safe strength wise under that condition it is not going to be um, it's not going to be an acceptable design from the point of view of the occupants of the building so that's why we need to consider serviceability so those are the four things that we're going to look at over the next um, number of videos um, with the exception of bearing resistance, which we've already covered, but we'll see in the examples how to calculate bearing resistance for beams. And uh, in our next video, we're going to start talking about how to calculate moment resistance of beams.